Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, we are going to continue our series about the foundation of DAX by introducing one of the most complex and hard topics for newbies, that is the context transition. Context transition is one of the topics that newbies really hate because it looks extremely complex. Now, let me tell you this loud and clear. Context transition is not complex. It's quite simple indeed. If you are finding context transition to be a hard topic to learn, that only means you are not yet familiar enough with the row context, the filter context and calculate. That means you need to practice more. You need to go back to the foundation, learn it better, do some practice and then come back and learn about the context transition. Because if you are not familiar with the difference between the row context and the filter context, then for sure context transition will be a nightmare. Whereas uh, if you slow down and learn the theory the right way, then context transition works uh, really smoothly. What is context transition? Well, context transition is one of the operations that Calculate performs. And when the context transition happens, Calculate transforms any existing row context into a filter context. That is the reason why you need to be familiar with the row context and the filter context, because they are different and Calculate transforms one into the other. So you need to know very well the differences in order to appreciate what Calculate does and why context transition is important. One of the reasons context transition is perceived as a complex uh, operation is that it's not easy to spot when context transition happens. In order for context transition to happen, you need to have a row context and you need to invoke calculate. The two ingredients together trigger the context transition. Sometimes they are hidden and it's not so easy to understand that context transition is happening. Let me show you this with several examples. We start from this report that is showing by year and month the value of the sales amount. Now let's pretend we want to compute the sales amount for only the big customers, the customers that spend more than 5,000 in uh, our products. So we can achieve this goal by filtering the customers that spend more than 5,000 and then summing their value. And in order to do that, we are going to rely on context transition in a very explicit way. It will be simple to discover where context transition is happening. So let's write the code together. We want to build a new measure that we call sales of big customers with a much larger font. Sales of big customers. We need to start an iteration because we want to do the operation customer by customer. So we do SMX over the values of customer, customer key. SMX introduces a row context and the row context contains the customer key. In order to compute the sales amount of the current customer, we need to invoke context transition. So let's store in a variable customer sales. We want to do SMX over sales of sales quantity times sales net price. This is our usual sales amount. But if I write it this way, it will be obeying only the current filter context. And we want the filter to be applied only to the, cust the current customer key. That is why we explicitly invoke calculate that performs context transition so that this calculation will happen in a new filter context created by calculate that contains only the current value for the customer key. Then in another variable, we store the result and we just use an if statement that says if the customer sales is greater or equal than 5,000, then return customer sales, otherwise returns a blank or, or a zero. And then return, return result. Context transition is happening here in the lines between five and seven. We have a row context introduced by some X iterating over the values of customer key and we are explicitly invoking calculate. Therefore, everything is going to work as expected. We just format it as a decimal number, place it in the report 
and the number shown will be smaller than the value of sales amount. You see, the sales amount is 312, 312, and uh, the sales of big customer is only 134. The sales of only the customers that spend more than 5,000. And in order to compute that, we use the context transition in a very clear way. We have the two ingredients, an iteration happening, therefore a row context, and calculate being invoked. Now, sometimes it is not that simple. Sometimes the context transition happens and you do not see neither the row context nor calculate being invoked. Let me show you that by creating a calculated column. We can create a calculated column in the customer table. So we just go in customer, uh, not in sales, but in customer. And I can create a new calculated column. So let me create a new column that we call just sales, where uh, with a larger font as usual. And we just call sales amount. Now, you see that we do not have a clear indication about calculate being executed, and we do not see the row context because we have no iteration happening. Nonetheless, the context transition is happening here. As usual, let's format it as a decimal number. And you see that the value of sales is a very different value for every customer. For every customer, we have the sales of the, cus the current customer only. Why that? Well, we are using a measure and measures are automatically surrounded by calculate. So calculate is here even if we don't see it. That would be the same as writing calculate sales amount. We don't need that calculate because measure reference are always surrounded by calculate. That is part of the definition of DAX. And we do have a row context that is the second ingredient of, calc of the context transition because it's a calculated column and calculated columns are executed in a row context by themselves. So we have the two ingredients, but they are very well hidden. And that is the reason the context transition is happening and the row context the current customer is transformed into a filter context into which the sales amount is being computed. Let me show you with the code that we wrote for the measure in a better way or in a more clear way what is happening here. The context transition is happening, meaning that the current literated value of the customer key is being transformed into a filter context. So writing this code would be the same as saving in a temporary variable. Let's call it the current customer, a current customer key, the value of customer customer key, which we can access because we do have a row context. And then that would be identical to apply a filter to customer, customer key equal to the value of the current customer key. This code is the very same as before. It's just more explicit and there is no need to do that. But you see that the context transition saves in a variable the current value of the customer key and then uses it as a filter to introduce a filter context that filters the current value for the customer key. And this is the context transition happening. So let me show you what was happening with the calculated column because with the calculated column, we have a much more complex piece of code. Even though we just wrote sales equal sales amount, we need to pay attention to several details. We do have a row context, and this time the row context is not only on one column, like it was before. Now we have a row context on the entire customer table. That means every individual column of the customer table is in the current row context. And the same operation is going to happen, generating a piece of code that is a bit more complex than before. I'm not going to write it. I have saved it somewhere. So let me copy the entire piece of code. And this measure, sales, this calculated column, sales amount, is identical to this piece of code. The engine saves the current address, the current age, the current birthday, the current city, the current value for every column in the customer table. And then 
uses all those columns to apply a filter before computing the sales amount. This calculation is the very same as the previous one, but of course, it was much simpler to just write sales amount. That is the reason why context transition is so convenient. Once you understand how it works, you can, it lets you write in a very simple way code that is actually much more complex than that. But you need to be aware of the fact that whenever you perform context transition, you are applying a filter on each and every column in the table. That might be an expensive operation. And it can also have some nasty side effects that you do not want. That is the reason why you need to learn how to discover where context transition happens, what it does, and how to take advantage of it. It is also important to understand that calculate is required for the context transition to happen. Let's look at the calculated column we created. We have a sales amount, so we do have calculate here. What happens if I replace sales amount with the code of sales amount? Let me go in the sales table where I have the measure sales amount. In sales, I do have sales amount. I can just copy the code of sales amount. Then I go back to my customer table in the sales calculated column and I replace sales amount with the code of sales amount. The code, the DAX code is the very same, but because I'm not calling a measure, now there is no calculate and calculate is needed in order for context transition to happen. Indeed, if I write the code this way, you see that the value of uh, sales is always the same number because context transition is no longer happening. Therefore, you do not have the calculation happening for the current customer only. Being able to distinguish when context transition is happening and when not is important to avoid problems with your code. I want to show you a simple example where I am going to compute the running total of sales and we write the code in two different ways. One will be wrong, the other one will be right. And the wrong one is wrong because of the context transition. So the running total of sales is the value of the sales amount for all the dates that happen to be before the current date. So I will need a measure to compute the current date and then I will use it as a filter over the date table in order to extend the filter context to include all the values or the dates that happen to be before the last visible date. Let's do that together. Let's get rid of sales of big customer. I want all the dates that happen to be before the last date. So I can start by writing a new measure. Let's call it max date. That is just the max of date date. This measure in every cell will return the last visible date. And you see that it shows uh, the 31 of May, the 30 of June, uh, the 31 of July. It's always the last date in the current filter context. Then I'm going to use this measure in order to compute the running total. And the running total is not that complex to compute. We just need to apply a new filter. So we can write a, a running total of sales. We are going to write two versions. So we start with running total sales one that uses calculate, computes the sales amount. And then we want to change the filter context on the date. We want to ignore any filter on the date. And then we want the filter to say the date needs to be less or equal than the max date. I'm messing up with parentheses. So this code seems to work. It's just filtering all the dates where the date is less or equal than the max date. We just hit enter, format it as a decimal number. And if I place running total sales on the report, you see that it doesn't work. It always returns the grand total of sales. So for sure there is something wrong here. And the problem is the context transition. Can you spot where context transition is happening here? Remember the context transition requires an iteration and calculate. 
We do have an iteration here. Filter is an iterator that is scanning the date table. So during the evaluation of this condition, we have a row context that includes all the columns of the date table. And we are calling a measure max data. Therefore, calculate is there. And the two ingredients of context transition are there. Iteration, calculate together. Therefore, this max date is not computing the max date in the current filter context. It's computing the max date in a new filter context where the date is only the currently iterated data. That is why this returns always all the dates. If we want to compute the running total sales the right way, we need to create the measure without relying on context transition. And we can do that by writing running total sales to and here, instead of using max date, I just write max of date date. The only difference between the previous version and the current one is that calculate is no longer there. Having removed calculate, context transition is no longer happening. And as usual, we format it as a decimal number, place the running total sales on the report, and now we obtain our running total sales that computes the current value. So. In order to understand and take advantage of context transition, you need to quickly spot that here we do have a problem because the two ingredients of context transition are there, therefore this number is wrong. Whereas this one that looks totally identical is not, because now calculate is missing. As you have seen, context transition in and by itself is not complex. The real problem with context transition is uh, being able to spot it the easy way. Understand that context transition requires an iteration happening and calculate. And when the two ingredients are there, calculate transforms the row context into an equivalent filter context by placing a filter on all the columns that are currently being iterated. A context transition works on any row context. So if you have multiple row contexts, they will all, will, they will all be uh, transformed into an equivalent filter context. In order to take advantage of context transition, what I always suggest is practice, practice and practice. During our training, both in live and in the video training, we spend a lot of time with exercises which are designed in order to teach you the basics of context transition the right way by showing how calculation can be right or wrong depending on whether you spot and understand the context transition. DAX requires you to slow down, learn the theory first and then practice later. If you start writing complex code without having had a proper training and a proper set of exercises, then it's very easy to compute the wrong number and think about context transition as a complex topic. It is not. The complexity is being able to distinguish between the raw context, the filter context, and being able to spot when an iteration is happening and when calculate is being invoked. These are the two ingredients of context transition that transform the raw context into a filter context. Enjoy, Dax. Mm -hmm.